Hmm, what's this? Hello, welcome back to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me for the next episode of The Dwarves. Yeah, that. All right, so we kind of know our role now, I suppose. And we're going to go take a look around at the, the various different things. We're going to look Rekus, at the Vrakus statue. who made the dwarves statue. of stone, has himself been hewn from stone by these self-same dwarves. A masterly piece of work, like one of which only the masons of the secondlings can still accomplish today. Of that we can be certain. All right, we can talk to, or we can look at either one of the two. Let's look at, uh, let's look at Grundrabor. Grun Gundrabor. Even for a dwarf, High King Gundrabor is very old. His long white beard suggests five hundred or more cycles. He seems weak, but when you talk to him, you feel an aura of grandeur. An aura of grandeur, indeed. Yes. Okay, and. That guy. The High King's advisor has the build of a warrior. His eyes are like those of a bird of prey, and you can see a keen intellect behind them. Can you now? All right, let's go take a peek at the Stellis. You skim over the ornate runes and look for the passage that Gundrabor and Belendolin told you about. If there is more than one candidate from a kingdom, and none can bring together all of the votes for themselves in a ballot, the High King can decide whether to declare the candidate with the most votes the winner, or to have the candidates compete in a contest to determine the victor. A contest to the death. Probably not, but maybe. The coal fire is lit when the kingdoms meet for council. It has lain dormant much too long, until it was finally lit again a few days ago. All right, so we're going to go head to our room, and we are going to go get our new shiny armor. And we will be fit for battle and princely awesomeness, or something. Welcome back to the lag spot, ladies and gents. Apparently they just didn't do this well, or again, it could be specifically to my video card or something. They're having issues. I do not know for certain, but it definitely is chuggy and laggy in this particular area. So, there you go, guys. The one flaw. Well, the two. there's two flaws. The other flaw is sometimes pathing is a little bit difficult in combat. That's about it. And I guess you could technically say the weird specific place they have to stand to see the different objects. It's not really a flaw. It's just an odd decision. De design decision, rather. There we go. That. Kai, what is it? I came to return these books to you, Tungdil. Luckily, I was able to make sense of most of it. You observed how the Mega took time to study the books during your escape. They are records from the Outer Lands. They tell of demonic beings from Barren Ground who can take possession of humans and invest them with great power. Immortality, for example? The Mega nods seriously. They speak of an axe forged by the Undergrounders called Keenfire. It is said to have the power to cut through the flesh and bone of the living and completely destroy the demonic spirit deep within their soul. Okay, well, we already heard about this, so it sounds like a win-win. Uh, do you believe that a demon has possessed Nudin? Nudan? Nadin? Nadidididin? So you think a demon from the Outer Lands has taken possession of Nudin? He looked very different when I encountered him in Parista, and he rose from the dead even though you cut off his head. That can't be explained purely through the power of the perished land. And he wanted to prevent these books from falling into our hands. That would only make sense if Keenfire had the power to defeat him. Or, could be something else entirely, do you know anything about the Outer Lands and these Undergroundlings? Uh, Keenfire... could be our best chance. Where is this Keenfire? I don't know if this weapon was ever forged. It requires rare materials and masterful craftsmanship. The purest, harder steel, stone barbs decorated with runes, a hilt of cigadaisy wood, inlays made of all the noble metals, the blades studded with diamonds, smithed in the hottest forge. We are dwarves. We have the most talented craftsmen. And you have the cigadaisy wood. It is amongst the objects in your rucksack, which is fortunate as there are no more cigadaisies in Girdleguard. But even if you manage to forge the axe, it might all be just a fairy tale. It's too little to wager our lives on. Is it? 
Well, do you know anything about the Outer Lands and these Undergroundlings? Do you know these Undergrounders? I have never heard of the Undergrounders, but I've been to the Outer Lands before. It must be terrible. The hordes of Teon have marched from there against our strongholds for thousands of years. It's not as bad as you think. It is certainly safer than a land in which a Magus possessed by a demon is on the loose. Well, that's that's probably true. Keenfire could be our only chance against Nadan. So, let's forge it. We can get all the missing materials, as well as a gem cutter, here in the stronghold. After all, Gandagar and his fourthlings are here. A stonemason from the secondlings, and I can smith. The Mega looks at you thoughtfully, and for a short time it seems as though your enthusiasm is rubbing off on her. But then she says, I wish you good luck, Tungdil. You still want to leave Girdlegard, but, but what will happen to your realm and, and all the other realms? I admire your optimism, my friend, but it isn't wise to stand in the way of a rolling stone. I don't wish to give up my realm, but I would only be prolonging the suffering unnecessarily. But... You don't want to let the last Mager in Girdlegard go. Unfortunately, you can't think of anything that could cause her to stay. Many thanks, Honorable Mager, for all that you have done. No, that's weak sauce. Or is it not that they're about to start doing something else? What? I was gonna, they were gonna... They're gonna play um, rock, paper, scissors. Rashamba? No? Nothing? Okay, so that... Well, she left a lot of random stuff here. Or she was she was in my chamber. Ooh. Alright, uh, let's look at the mushroom and cheese platter. Sounds... A variety of cheeses, pickled okay. cave mushrooms, toasted vault moss, and some smoked sausage. Mmm. The intense smell of the cheese makes your mouth begin to water. Okay, I generally don't... Okay, I, I've never eaten green cheese. Don't think I'm going to start now. The only thing there that I would have eaten would have probably been the sausage. Eh. Hmm. Alright, let's look at the books. Garen found an answer to the threat. Keenfire. No matter how difficult it is to forge it, we must do it. We don't know of anything else that could injure a demon. A quick smack to the Nalgin. Sigur Daisy wood. Very rare. I guess Lot Yonan wanted it to examine or experiment with. Sure, if you say so, buddy. And we can go to bed. That you are looking forward creepy. to the first proper bed for weeks. All right, let's lie down to sleep. You undress and lie down. Before you know it, your eyes close and you fall asleep. Don't show that, please. Thank you. When your new armor is brought to you the next morning, you can hardly believe your eyes. However, as a smith, you can't stand the fact that you haven't contributed anything to it and decide to add some inlays. He seems angry. Even one who wears the armor of a prince can still be a farrier underneath it, don't you think, Tungdil Bolifar? Uh, okay. What are you doing here? What are you doing in here? Ignoring your question, Bislipur eyes you very exactly before he speaks. So, you want to be one of our kingdom? A foundling brought up by a wizard? One wouldn't think it possible. And I don't think it possible either. There is no proof of your origin and Gandagar has the council on his side. Why don't you spare yourself the disgrace and just not turn up in front of the council? Put your scheme to bed and we will take you into our kingdom. We will give you everything you need your whole life long. In exchange, you support Gandagar instead of challenging him. Done. No, no, I'm not done. Proof? You mean like your letter that blames the elves? Proof? Oh, you mean like your letter that has been found after a thousand cycles and makes the elves responsible for the fall of the fifthlings? It is no secret that the elves are deceitful. And what could possibly be more suited to get one over on us than letting the perished land in and presenting us as the scapegoat? 
The elves have been displaced by the perished land and are now almost eradicated. I said they are deceitful, not wise. It's funny. Just wait for what I have to say in my speech. And what if I don't take you up on your suggestion? Let's say... Speech. Children of the smith cannot be silenced. You are the dwarf, I confess. But no fourthling can remember a dwarf child ever going missing. And you know thousands of the fourthlings personally, and know exactly where they live in the mountains, what they're planning, or what small tragedies take place in their lives? You have a sense that all the long evenings in the library and debating with Lot Yonan weren't for nothing, as Bislipper struggles for a reply, then lets it go. <laughs> and what if I don't take you up on your suggestion? And what if I don't withdraw my candidacy? You wish to stand against your own king? A stray dwarf offending a deserving leader such as Gandagar through his claim? No one in the Brown Range will like that. Prepare yourself for life as an outsider among the fourthlings. You have had enough of this dwarf. He makes you feel uneasy, or worse still. Get out! A humanized bastard will not issue me orders. Know your place, false dwarf. Coward. Huh. Well, that probably didn't feel super good. Yeah, burning metal into your flesh, not really the best thing for you. But... Eh, what do I know? Alright, so, all that being said, let's look at the bowl of gold and we can look at the armor. Let's check out the our armor. The armor has been made by a master. Over the chainmail is steel plate, alloyed with gold in many places, which certainly appeals to you. There are also several decorative elements made of stone to honor its origin in the kingdom of the best stonemasons. You had just finished setting the last inlay, the seal of Lot Yonan, who brought you up and is gone, when Bislipper interrupted you. Well, let's go take a look at the gold that we just poured all over our hand. Some of the gold has left a coin-sized mark on the back of your hand. It hurts, but you like the idea that a bit of the metal you love is now part of you. Well, that's weird. Uh, okay. All right, well, let's look at the armor again. Again? Do we put it on now? What do we do? Not only is it worthy of a king and fits me like a glove, but it should also offer me additional protection in battle. Well, duh. That's kind of the point, right, buddy? Ooh, don't we look regal. Yeah, look at him. He's rocking the cool armor. He doesn't have a headpiece, though, but he's got that big shoulder uh, guard pad thing, so he's looking solid now. All right, it's time for us to do a little bit of speechitude or in this or, or something. I, I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. That is why I, too, lodge a claim to the throne and why I think I am the more capable heir. Thank you for your speech, Tundil Bolifar. The council may now ask questions. Oh, okay. Uh, call up uh, Bisloper. Bisloper, Bisloper, it's a weird name. Anyway. Bisloper? Nothing you say will convince anyone here. You didn't grow up amongst us, and no one knows if you really are a fourthling. I do not believe there has ever been a more unworthy heir to the throne of the High King. You are just wasting our time. All right, well, I was going to let this play through without me talking, just kind of let you guys experience it, like, straight up the way they do it, but I'm going to actually read you guys the different things here. I didn't know that you speak for everyone here. That's interesting. Shouldn't a dwarf's deeds count more than his ancestry? As an outsider, I bring new ideas and a breath of fresh air with me. Well, I'm going to go with the number three, that it's interesting that he speaks for everyone here. Oh, I didn't know you were the spokesperson for everyone at this assembly, Bisloper. I had the impression that every dwarf is capable of forming their own opinion. Absolutely. <laughs> here, here! He's right, you know. Keep out of it, Bisloper. 
Yes, the dwarf from the Second Link Kingdom over there. You see that a war against the elves would be madness. But how can such a young dwarf as you judge that? <laughs> You've hardly seen anything of the world, has he? All right, next up, if we attack the elves, we are no better than the Alfar. It is our duty to protect Gr Girdleguard, 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 including the elves. We would lose a war against the elves. It is our duty to protect the Girdle. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We're gonna go with that. It is true. There is much that I only know from books, but it is written that it is our duty to defend and protect Girdleguard, and that includes the elves. And don't the elves have the same enemy as we do? They could stand by us in battle. Why should we play into the hands of the enemy by attacking them rather than working against the enemy together? That is true. He's right. The words of a clever warrior. But the point he is hates us, and we hate them too. What is it they say again? My enemy's enemy is my friend. Yes, your question? Just so I get this right, you want to forge a weapon that is described in a book of fairy tales from the perished land to kill a demon that none of us has ever seen? I have most definitely seen it, Goingar, yellow belly shimmer beard. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the fact is, our problems won't solve themselves. The dwarves must act. And Okai, the Maga, translated the text and thinks we might be able to kill the demon like this. I cannot prove that it is the solution, but it is our only option. Well, the fact is, our problems won't solve themselves. The dwarves must act. We have seen the perished land with our own eyes, and its master Nodon could not be killed. Many have died for the books in which it is written how keen fire can be made. And the Magus did all he could to get his hands on the two halves made of Sigur Daisy wood. Those are the facts, whether you like them or not. These problems won't solve themselves, so I ask you, is it the Dwarven way to step aside and do nothing, or is it our way to act? To act! Uh, we don't hide away. If the humans won't stop the Parish Land, then we will. We shouldn't get drawn in. Let's show the Magus the strength of the Dwarves. I have heard enough. The Council has heard the words of both candidates and must now make its decision. Those of you who wish to see Tungdil Bolifar, the returning son from the Fourth Link Kingdom, as my successor, raise your axe. And those who wish to see Gandagar Silverbeard from the Silverbeards, the King of the Fourthlings, as my successor. It's close, but Gandagar has received more votes. Very good. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Excellent! Here's to Gandagar! Long live our new High King! However, the result was not unanimous, and as acting High King, I avail myself of my right to demand a contest between the aspirants. What is this? But he won the ballot. That's the rules. The High King has the right to do so. Respect! He is still the High King. Silence! You have heard the High King's command. Write down your challenge for the aspirants. Are you ready? The one that masters this task first will become the High King. It is... an expedition. The trial is to lead a group to forge the axe Keenfire in the Grey Range, which can then be used to fight against the Magus Nodon. Ah... An expedition into the perished land? Ha <laughs> ha! Brilliant! You can't be serious. <laughs> That's what I call a worthy challenge, don't you think? I call it luck, scholar. 
Of all the challenges, Bislapur draws this one. <laughs> yes. Luck. I like it. I like it. There's some definite subversion and some uh, sneaky, sneaky plays, but I like it. But, my king, don't demand this of me. Why me, of all people? You are one of my best gem cutters, and I promise to support him. It should be a fair contest. Or should I break my word just because of you? But... You will go, Goimgar Shimabeard. Do not put us to shame. Follow Tungdil's instructions. Go, and come back in good health. And with that, our group is complete. Huh. Who have you chosen as Mason? Oh, dang. Good day, gentlemen. Bavragar? The old drunkard? Old drunkard? He assured me he's the best stonemason here. The High King himself sent him. Well, I said I was precisely the stonemason you need. I didn't exactly say I was sent by the High King. You let yourself be tricked by a drunkard. I don't want him with us. Rest assured, Boindil, I too could imagine better company. But Tungdil gave me his word. Yes, I gave you my word. And as long as you are capable of doing the stonework needed for Keenfire, you are welcome. Girdleguard is at stake here. I wish you no ill fortune, Tungdil. But also, no good fortune. The throne belongs to me. And through my victory, Vrakus will show the clans. I hope they patch this and fix the weird fire effects for... If it's just my computer... The task the... is clear to the contenders. The first to forge keen fire and bring it back here has proven his abilities and will be our new High King to lead us in battle against Nod On. It will take months to complete the task. The journey to the Fiflings alone is a long and dangerous business. Dangerous, yes, but not necessarily long. Do you know the old tunnel system that connects the Dwarven Kingdoms? Tunnels are all well and good, but why should we get there so much quicker under the ground than over it? A knowing smile plays on the mouth of the advisor. Well... Okay. Yeah, I hope they uh, patch it and they fix whatever weird performance issues my computer's having. I don't know if it's specific to my video card, the type of video card, or processor. I don't know what it is, but, like, that's kind of a big area of the story, so you would expect it to hopefully get fixed soon. Oh, my. <laughs> yes! Pretty impressive what our forefathers achieved here, isn't it? The kingdoms all work together. If we do the same... Nothing is impossible. Hear, hear. All right, so why were you so set on coming with us? I still don't understand why you tricked me and why you were so set on coming with us. I have been the master of stone for more than 200 sun cycles. My work is admired all over Girdleguard. There has never been a better secondling mason than me. But today... I don't want to be remembered as a drunkard with the chisel trembling in my hand, but as Bavragor Amethyst, undefeated master of stone who brought keen fire to life. One last masterpiece. Fair enough. That's that's good. Sorry for asking, but that. Uh, but what went on between you and Boindil? You should stop drinking so much. It'll kill you one of these days. All right, Boindil. I. I hope you understand me asking, but there seems to be bad blood between you and Boindil. It's nothing that will endanger our mission. We've just always hated each other. There's more behind it than commonplace hatred. Bavragor doesn't react. His gaze is directed towards events that took place a long time ago. Well, you should stop drinking so much. It'll kill you one of these really days. You should rein in your drinking. We need you in good shape. There are some who say I'm only the master of beer and not the master of stone anymore. But don't worry. I haven't forgotten. I can't forget. No matter how much I drink. Hmm. Hmm. 
I wonder why we haven't seen any sign of Gandagar recently. Perhaps they took a wrong turn somewhere. Oh, I'm sure we'll reach the Fifthling Kingdom before them. Don't say stuff like that. There's no way this ends well. We're not on the way to the Fifthlings. We are on the way to the Firstlings. We're probably already under the land of the Custodian. The Firstlings? Why? The Firstlings have been the best smiths in Girdleguard since the Fifthlings were wiped out. Only they can alloy Teonium and Palandium, which are actually mutually repellent. Anyway, we could use all the help we can get in the battle against Nodon, and... And... Oh dear. Told you it wasn't going to end well. I told you it wasn't going to end well. Things are going far too easy for it to end well. Just saying. Damn. Goimga. Oh, it, <coughs> it burns. What's wrong with this beard? We won't get further this way, scholar. What now? It's all your fault, you imposter. I was nearly killed, and for what? It is good that you are still alive. We need you for our mission. So you can steal a throne that doesn't belong to you? Hatred glints in the gem cutter's eyes. And for a moment, you think he's going to attack you with the courage of desperation. This is about saving Girdleguard, not the title of High King. Punish Goimar with <laughs> disregard. You should control your poison tongue better. You are under my command. Yeah, I'll go with the diplomatic one. I'm not interested in the title of High King. I am trying to save Girdleguard. Even if you don't believe anything else, you must believe this. I don't have to believe anything. I am here against my will. My own thoughts are my only remaining right. Enough! Gather up all the materials we can still save. If we manage to reach the Firstlings, we can get anything we're missing there. And it should be less than 200 miles to their stronghold. Dude's got mad skills of uh, navigation, if he can judge that. So, I wonder what sort of horrible creatures and nasty things are going to be awaiting us down here below the depths of After the world. After you have gathered together oh. the materials, above you begin again. to search for a way out. And after a sweaty climb, you reach a door adorned with runes. From here, you enter a large cave with a waterfall covering a sun-drenched opening. You walk through the waterfall one after another. And after the unintentional shower, you find yourselves in Weyan, near the enchanted realm of Oromyra. You find yourselves on a plateau, and the river which falls as a waterfall here hides the entrance to the underground rail network. It then flows past a forest, behind which you can see a wall and tiled roofs. You check the map. That must be Mifidadia. We'll go through the forest to the city and see if we can refresh our supplies and buy some ponies. Ooh, ponies! Hey, we leveled up with Tungdil. Sweet! Alright, ladies and gents, that is going to do it for this particular episode. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will be back relatively shortly with the next installment of The Dwarves. Until then, my name is Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later.